Hi everybody, Jeff Simon here from Social Flight with another cool building stage on our Titan T51D Mustang. Now today I'm very excited we're going to work on a very cool section of the build and that is the emergency fuel shutoff and the emergency gear extension. We have to get all of these in place before we can finish closing up the fuselage, get it out of here and start putting things on the gear. So we're going to mount both of those here in the center console and the way that we're going to control it is with these very very cool cables I'll show you these right here custom engraved by McFarlane they are absolutely gorgeous you know one of the things I like about McFarlane cables is that everything is made in-house they have all their own CNC machining and assembly engraving painting so you can pretty much get whatever you want custom done and that just lasts it's so much better than putting labels on things or anything else it's a great way to have them absolutely identified they're red they're used for emergency purposes they've got that engraving it's not going to wear over over time or anything like that and they have this other cool safety feature and that is that they are press to uh, release in other words you can't accidentally pull one of these nothing happens if you just pull with this even if it's with all your might you actually have to click it and then it'll pull up you just click this little thing closed pull it up and so it's a it's a really great way to ensure that your emergency controls are kind of locked down unless you absolutely need them. And then when you do, they're very, very easy to identify and to use. So we want to get moving on our build. However, I want to bring you in on a few other things. And one of the things that we had is, you know, nothing, uh, things don't always go as planned when you're building a plane, especially when you're putting a lot of custom touches into it. So we ran into a problem here that we weren't really quite expecting. Uh, we were had, all along, we had it planned that this is where the controls are going to go and how it was going to work. The problem came in when we looked at what throw we actually needed in order to actuate both of those valves. And we measured, we, we actually put the throw into the cable uh, control as well as the cushion that we actually needed for full throw activation. And a cushion we put, in this case, just to make sure it would all work, we wanted an extra quarter inch of spacing. But generally what a cushion is, is any time that you push a cable in, you never want it to go all the way to the base. You want that cable to have know that it, you're hitting a stop at the lever at the other end of the cable without actually uh, hitting the stop here on the control because that lets you know. So that's called cushion. It's done throughout general aviation aircraft and it just lets you know that, the, uh, that everything's working properly. So I built a little extra cushion into that to make sure we had clearance. We go and we mount one of these in place where we had kind of hoped. Now it's actually going to go further uh, in here, but if I just kind of put it on the side and hold it like this, the problem that we got is that when the stick is in its forward most position, if you move across, you just barely hit it. And we don't want any interference even at full stick forward at all, especially with an emergency control. So we were stuck. How are we going to still be able to put something right in the area that we want um, and, uh, and not interfere in any way, have it look right, etc. So Ben and I went to work on this and we came up with an idea. Uh, and that idea is to mount the cable at an angle. To actually mount it here so that it's coming up a little bit more at an angle. Hard to show that, but I'll actually take this cable out and show you. So instead of it coming out on this plane like this and having the stick hit it here, we actually wanted to mount it a little bit at an angle against that and then the stick can, can clear that. So the question becomes, how do you do that? I opened, fired up SolidWorks and went and made 3D printed a little angle piece. Has a hole in it and it fits right in here to our cable. Bring it up for you. And we have a fun little solution to this problem. So now, the cable, the, uh, uh, the cable will be at an angle to the sheet. 
angled slightly up, so it's away from our stick. Um, this is a pretty cool thing. We have a, a 3D printer running behind us, printing out another one. <laughs> now you might ask, what happens on the other side of that? Well, we simply print a second one, and when that goes on at the opposite side, you then have that transition that allows you to put a nut on that will be perpendicular to that. It all works out perfectly, and I'll show you how that works. So we go and we test this concept. And if you put it in and you mount it, excuse the noise from the cable, but if you put it in and you show right where you're gonna mount it, it clears, no problem whatsoever. It actually looks really good, matches, etc. And then we have that uh, option for being able to mount that. So that's cool, it's a great way of being able to kind of use your 3D print printer and model things. The next issue is how durable will that actually be if it's printed? And we all know that aircraft get very hot on the ground. And so the idea of, of just using PLA or one of the other filaments and making that our, our part that's permanent isn't something that really we're, we were thrilled about doing. So uh, I got a big grin on my face because what I did is I went back and talked to McFarlane again. And they were happy to go and take the same custom machining that they do on a regular basis and take the model that we made and machine out of aluminum the exact pieces that we needed to make all of this fit. And I have to tell you, they are absolutely like jewelry. They are gorgeous. They came back to us, perfect fit for their cables, perfect shape, perfect angle, everything just works on both sides. And so you can see uh, how this all fits, how it works. It is, uh, it's just a, a really exciting way to solve a problem. And that's the reason that we're really so into this build. I love with, when we have to come up with solutions, we think them through, we work with other people sometimes, and we come up with a really eloquent way of solving a problem that's going to look wonderful for years to come. So big thanks to McFarland for working with us and helping us with that and uh, machining those gorgeous adapters. And now we're gonna get to work, mount it all in place, and show you how we have these controls for both our fuel shutoff and our emergency gear extension on our Titan T51D Mustang. Let's get to work. All right, so now we've got the control cables in place for the emergency gear dump and the fuel shutoff, and it absolutely looks great. So it is time now to go back and do the other end of the cable and get the controls in place that will actually control both the fuel shutoff and the emergency gear dump. Now, quick refresher for how the emergency gear system works on the Titan T51 Mustang. The gear is actually all hydraulically operated and you have essentially a pressure line for up, a pressure line for down, and then there's a return line 
that is only used in the emergency gear dump. So all we're really doing here is a gravity drop system that does have a spring and uh, an uh, assist along with uh, some pressure cylinders that help move it down. But really most of it is done through gravity and all we're doing is taking the hydraulic pressure away. So what we do is we have a T valve that connects the high pressure, the low pressure, and the return. And it's either all the way closed, three way closed valve, or all the way open where upper and lower are just connected and then returning the fluid back to the reservoir. And so we need to connect the, the actual cable to that. And then we need to do the same thing for the fuel shutoff, which is a simple on off valve. Now, anytime that I am dealing with control cables, I really do like to use a really nice fitting on the end uh, that's connecting to a lever arm for whatever valve or whatever other control is being done. And uh, what I do is I like to use these B stop nuts for cable ends. You can find these at aircraft spruce or some other sources, um, but they're, they're really stable. They don't tend to wobble or do anything like that. And the way that they are done is you just drill a hole in the arm. In this case, we've located a position down the arm that gives the amount of throw that we want, the, the distance of push and pull on the cable. And and then actually just mounted the uh, uh, the actual little cable end right here which allows it to rotate and then there's a hex set screw on the end that you can see right there that hex set screw allows us to put the cable through and use the set screw anytime that when, once it's fully adjusted we're going to use the set screw but we're also going to put some loctite on that so the set screw can't back up um, that's something we want to do and then usually you'll also put a hook at the end of the center wire of a cable so that it won't pull out uh, either but it's usually good enough just in this case to uh, to do what we're going to do with uh, locking down that set screw and then putting the um, loctite on in place so this is the one that's going back there for the emergency gear dump and then this is the fuel shutoff that we're going to be using which uh, also I've mounted the control on which just as you can see just rotates like that and uh, and goes forward so I'm going to put a little bracket in the back get everything all set up so that uh, the cable can, is controlled in place and again, you also want a little bit of a buffer. We put in that cushion, as it's called, on the control in the front so that you know that you've hit the stop. You do the same thing on the back where you have the sleeve, the, the sheath of the cable, and you don't want to hit the sheath of the cable. You want to make sure that the arm is actually hitting its end of travel before it hits the sheath. So we do the same thing on both ends, kind of putting cushion on both ends to make sure that everything's being done correctly. So I'm gonna get all those in place and then we'll be done with this stage of build on our Titan T51D Mustang. Let's get to work.
Well, that's it for another cool building stage on our Titan T51D Mustang. These controls for the emergency gear dump and the fuel shutoff are absolutely fantastic. They came out better than I could have imagined. And as a matter of fact, one of the really cool things is that, you know, sometimes when you're trying to solve a problem, you wind up engineering something that is actually better than you even originally tried before you hit the problem. The original way that we were gonna do these cables had them just flush with this center console panel. And when we hit that problem where we had to use an angle, what ended up happening is the new position of the controls directly faces the eye line of the pilot. When you look down, you actually see them face on. And when you go to pull those emergency controls, they're right there, they're easy to pull straight at your face. And so the solution that we ended up engineering actually works better than what we would have done originally. And so a huge shout out, thanks to Ben. I wish he were here, but he's down there at Clemson right now. And a big thanks to him for helping engineer that, 3D print it. Huge thanks to McFarland for coming up with a custom part out of our 3D model in aluminum. And then of course, for their amazing cables. Until next time, I'm Jeff Simon for Social Flight. Be sure to check out socialflight.com and the free Social Flight apps for Apple and Android devices. We've got tens of thousands of aviation events, destinations. Every Tuesday night, we've got Social Flight Live. Just check it all out at socialflight.com. And until next time, I wish you all blue skies.